Get Bruce is a call that has been made by producer after producer when they need one of the best comedy writers around. Since writing for a Bette Midler special in the mid-70s, Bruce has been on a 40-year roll. He has written by my count, <laughs> is written right. by, that's yeah. right. By my count, he's written for 12 Academy Award shows, six Tony Award shows, five American comedy shows, comedy award shows, and multiple times for the Emmys, the Grammys, the People's Choice Awards, the TV Land Awards, and the Kennedy Mark Twain Awards, just to name a few. Bruce has also written for specials starring Bette Midler, Ray Charles, Dolly Parton, Elizabeth Taylor, and early on for Donnie and Marie. He has appeared on Broadway in Hairspray and on camera as a regular on Hollywood Squares. Here is one of the wittiest guys around, Bruce Valanche. Oh. Good afternoon, I'm Amy Schumer. <laughs> Get mistaken all the time for her. It's... Several of you have asked about my shirt. It's from the Ivanka collection. <laughs> which I found in a dumpster behind Nordstrom. corner of the grove I didn't know before, but it, it's there. And I, of course, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, this morning I went to George's star. I, was, I remember when they put the star down there. Um, it's been moved. There's construction. It's, it's now on Selma. <laughs> Oddly enough, my old corner... So things go full circle. Uh, I wanted to tell you about how I met George, because it it's a, lo a long time ago. Um, it was uh, about, I don't know, 35 years ago, and the AIDS epidemic had just started, and we were raising money. Uh, we were doing a show called The Commitment to Life, and it was uh, because there was no government funding or anything, so we were, we were galvanizing show business. And of course, because the gay community was being hit more than anybody else, uh, it was all gay people who were putting it together, and we thought it might be helpful if we had one straight person <laughs> working with us. We, we had Agnes Moorhead for a minute, but who knew? <laughs> I always loved her because her name is like a stage direction. So we had this, we went to George's office, which is very imposing. And it was all these power queens at the long table. And George and I were at opposite ends by coincidence. And it was, I looked down the table and it was like Citizen Kane with Orson Welles at one end and me appearing in the Ruth Warwick role at, at the other end. And all these power queens sitting, and everybody was looking at the stuff because George's office is festooned with memorabilia from this career. It was amazing. And of course, the one thing we all locked on was this bizarre picture in a frame. It was an album cover, and it was Robert Mitchum. Now, apparently, Robert Mitchum had gone and done a picture called Affair in Trinidad, with Rita Hayworth and uh, Glenn Ford. And while he was down there, he fell in love with Calypso music, and he recorded an album of Calypso song. <laughs> Seriously. You can still get it. Go on Amazon. Robert Mitchum sings Calypso. <laughs> and the album cover, remember album covers? The album cover was framed on George's wall, and it's Robert Mitchum in a muscle suit, looking just the way you want. Robert Mitchum to look. And slightly behind him is a gorgeous woman in a red dress who obviously is going to have a big time with Robert Mitchum once the record's over. And she's standing there and she, looks, she just looks incredible. And of course, that's Jolene Brand, who I recognized from the Ernie Kovacs show because I'm that kind of queen. <laughs> 
And, and we're all looking at this. And George looks at, at one of these pa- power queens, notices you know, that he's looking at the picture and says, what are, you, what are you looking at? And this queen, of course, who does not want to be like tripped up, says, who's the beautiful woman in this picture? And George says, Mrs. Slaughter. And the queen says, your mother? (laughs) And this was the beginning. Since then, we've done about 50 television shows over the years. And George, George, uh, uh, he came right, I mean, he, he jumped in on that show, I have to tell you. I mean, I don't think George has ever done a show like this where the opening number was, uh, the, the announcer said, ladies and gentlemen, the West Hollywood City Council, and the curtain went up on the Chippendale dancers. <laughs> George, this George's idea. Well, we have the Chippendale dancers. What do we do with them? I said, well, this is how we introduce them. And that, this is how this collaboration was born. And uh, so uh, I, I, everybody has many, many stories about George, but I want to um, talk about ones that mean something to me. Uh, he did jump in when nobody else would. He jumped in. Uh, in the gay community, we have what we call straight allies, George was the first straight ally in show business, I knew. And any t- he did a few shows like that afterwards. Anytime you called him for anything like this, he was there. Uh, I don't think that in his previous life, in, in like East St. Louis, there were a whole lot of people like me and, and the people I dragged in. I mean, once we, we not only did he, he evolve, at one point, he's prescient. Uh, he said to me, you know, I was talking about uh, a drag pageant that I had emceed, uh, which was called Quest for the Crown. And it was all these drag queens clawing at each other. And he said, that would be a great show. Would you like a Miss America drag thing? We can call it the drag race. <laughs> there was no RuPaul at the time. And we went and pitched this thing. But first I said, you have to meet some drag queens. So I brought a bunch of drag queens into the office, and we all had, and he met every single one of them. I mean, and they were some of the greats. Amber Alert. <laughs> Rachel Profiling. Amanda Reckon With. Anita Procedure. And Anaphylactic Shock. And we all sat there, and they all worshipped him because uh, he knew Cher. And he had to prove that he knew Cher, you know, so he called Cher. And, you know, she answered the phone, he put her on speaker, and, you know, he said the way he says to people, my darling! And they all just sort of sat there. And Cher... <laughs> she called him Hammer. And, uh, and they knew it was Cher, and there was a collective gasp. So um, he, he ameliorated himself immediately into that community, and... Uh, and considered and did and, and and saw the handwriting on the wall. I mean, we could have done the drag show had the times been a little bit more advanced than they were. But he, he did have that idea. He also, um, when we did uh, the uh, did fifteen American Comedy Awards with George, and uh, uh, we honored Rodney Dangerfield one year. And this was a, a, during a period in Rodney's life where he was living at the Beverly Hilton Hotel and going out in his bathrobe. And the Cadillac would pull up, and a guy in a bathrobe and and, uh, Beverly Hilton carpet slippers would step out and come in. And that's how he came to the meeting. He came in in the bathrobe, and uh, he sat in the meeting with the bathrobe. And um, when he got there, we were watching a tape that George's staff had put together for a tribute that was happening to George. And it was, I forget what the group was. It was some, it was NAACP or something like that, because the tape emphasized how George pretty much integrated variety television in a big way. Uh, And one thing after another with George and black people, which to somebody of Rodney's generation was extraordinary because there wasn't a producer who consistently did that kind of work without batting an eyelash. And I could see Rodney looking at George through this thing, and I mean, the most amazing thing happened. He closed the bathrobe. (laughs) 
Still don't know why I was not going under that table. And he just kept, he looked at George and he said, you're really somebody. We should just do this tribute to you. We will do it for you. And I thought, yes. He, George had done things that nobody else would do. And the celebration they were doing was a minor celebration. It wasn't the kind of thing that would make the front page of the New York Times. But he was that guy. He was that guy who did all of those things. He, he uh, uh, just on a very pride, he made me a lyricist. I wrote a song that Tony Danza sang at the Caesar's Palace tribute. Glenn Rovin and I wrote a song. We, we played the palace. We, anyway, so that was my, you know, my introduction to lyric writing. But he, um, it's very rare to meet somebody who functions as uh, a mentor and a civil rights worker gay rights worker, a subversive in society, and yet swims the mainstream. This is an unusual, uncanny combination. I only know one guy who fits that bill. That's George. And so whenever George calls me and says, we need to do this thing, we need to do that thing, I say to him a line that I've heard him use a million times, and I say it to you today, George, whatever you ask me to do, whatever you want, I will do, and that's my final offer. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You know, I can already feel the excitement building for our next Hollywood Media Professional Celebrity Showcase. <laughs> 